and welcome back to Electrify This. I am here with Nathan. Nathan, can you introduce yourself and why we're we sitting in this Kia EV3 GT line? What's happening? What's happening? Well, we're going to see whether or not its battery is uh, is in a good state of health or not. So uh, my business is Test EV and I represent Avalu EV Battery Health Testing, an Austrian company who's been doing this for about seven years and they've built a, a really amazing bit of kit that That's talks it. to the car. This is it. That's all there is. Little thing. It's got a SIM card inside. It's got all the software inside. You don't even have to tell it that it's a Kia. And we're going to do that test and it'll take about three minutes and we'll have a result for exactly how healthy the battery is in this particular car. And the point of this is that if you had a second-hand car that you're considering buying, you want to get a battery health check, right? That's right. You know, there's a lot of people holding back on EVs, particularly in the second-hand market, because they're really concerned about the battery. And so um, this just puts peace of mind in place and gives you a complete understanding as to what's going on. This is the version of getting the mechanic to come and check out a second-hand car. That yeah, you're... it's almost <laughs> like the modern-day compression test right. on the motor. And, you know, as a motor starts to wear out, you'll see the compression drop slowly. Um, similar with our batteries, we know that the batteries degrade a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so this will tell you exactly how much. Let's plug it in. And you say it takes three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, let's do that and then we'll talk. So we're going to start by connecting the cable. So there's a little port down here, commonly known as the OBD2 port. Now I'm doing that by hand, but I can feel the spot. We're going to turn the car on. We're going to select a gear. So we've got all the systems woken up. Then we're going to plug in the device and it's going to boot up. We'll start by getting a, a blue light and then it'll start working through its boot sequence. And you say this takes about three minutes. So this bit will take a couple of seconds. and It'll go orange in a second. Does the car know that you're doing this? Uh, sort of, not really. Some cars do. Mercedes Benz go. I'm being, I'm being touched, <laughs> and so do, so do, uh, so do BMWs. So now it's gone orange, and that's now taking the VIN number from the vehicle and understanding what the car is, and then once it's got that, it goes orange solid, and that means it's now started its three minute cycle. In that three minutes, it's going to pull all sorts of data from the battery, each individual cell, the temperature, the um, the, the charging behaviour it's seen in the past, um, a whole bunch of information. And we take all that information, and we correlate it against data we have in the cloud, yeah. and then that gives us um, a, a full result of your real world battery health. And what's uh, considered a good and healthy battery? Well, so one of the ways we deal with that is we actually benchmark your car versus all the cars we've tested in the past. So that gives you an understanding about where your car is in an, in an average sort of bell curve. Mm -hmm. That's one way. And then the other one is we know that batteries are warranted up to about up to 70% of battery health, mm -hmm. but the vast majority of the cars that we test are typically in the in the um, 90s, maybe the high 80s, yep. um, and that that goes you know that, that goes for sort of what you would typically expect. It's still going. And it'll run for it about another, yeah, about another 90 seconds. <laughs> um, and then it, it'll pop out. And once it's finished that test, it'll go green. Right. It'll send that packet of data off to Austria. And by the time we've turned all the bits and pieces off and got ourselves ready, I'll have an email in my, in my pocket which will have the answer. You are joking. It's so quick. To Austria. To Austria, because that's where our servers are. That's where the... the, the Stop. The, yeah, and then and then literally in about 30 seconds, I'll have a fully-fledged two-page report, which will give you everything that we've learnt, and you'll be able to use that for um, buying and selling. And particularly, we know that about two-thirds of all cars are bought and sold between people like you and me. Yep. And so, you know, if you're buying a car from somebody and you love it, but you're not sure about the battery, you can get somebody come out and provide you a test and have that peace of mind so that you can proceed with the purchase. We've gone green. Okay, we've gone green just as I turn the camera off. How much would I expect to pay for, for something like that? So it depends on how um, how you're doing it. So if you go to a shop, you'll tend to pay just below a couple of hundred dollars, about 175 that sort okay. of order. And if somebody's coming out to you, that often you know might charge a bit more because of the mobile service. Yeah, so yeah. in the mid 200s, that order. So about a, about a couple of hundred dollars will get you um, this information um, in short order and that at real confidence. So 
I have noticed that actually at auctions these days, you're starting to see battery health checks being done by Pickles and That's by right. Mannheim. And Mannheim. Yeah. That's right. So Pickles and Mannheim are both customers of, of Avalu. Yeah. And um, they're providing that with all of the EVs that they've, uh, see, that that, they've sold. That is so... In terms of peace of mind, I know a lot of the cars that you'd be buying, potentially even at auction, would still have a battery warranty. Yeah. Is... Is that enough to just go, oh, well, it's still under warranty? Or what are you getting in terms of peace of mind on top of knowing that potentially it's still under warranty? If you think about an EV as the battery's capacity is your range and your range is almost your value, right? right. You know, how far you can go is, is how useful the car is. Yeah. So car to car, there are differences. Um, I tested four 803s in a row and they range from 100% to 90%. So, really? And they're all similar Ks and similar age. What would have affected that? Um, all sorts of things, everything from, um, you know, vehicle manufacturer through to uh, charging behaviour, through to maybe they've sat for a long time at a low state of charge. Like mm. lots of different things can impact health. I hadn't thought of that in terms of yeah. sitting for a long time. And so, you know, four almost identical cars having completely different results means that, you know, there's some value there. And in time, I think the market will start to become more mature and use health testing as a way to help them, um, you know, value that car is yeah. that one worth more than that one i see rather than k's say for instance yeah or age. so if i was buying a car and I, say there were two at o threes one had 92 percent health and then the other one was say 96 percent mm. is that a big disparity like would that make a big difference look it's not a massive disparity and maybe that would be enough for um that uh, to be you know thought to be about the same but when you're talking about a 10 percent delta i think that's enough to be sort of saying you know 10 percent 40 k's that sort of order it yeah. starts to be worth something right yeah um and so you know it might be part of the decision making to set two exactly the same cars same color and different percentage you'll gravitate that towards would be the, the one like, that, like k's now how yeah, we do with right. cars right exactly ah. but it was funny how those those health did not correlate to the kilometers they aren't directly really? correlation yeah yeah do you think DC charging all the time affects battery health? It does in some cars, but not all cars. Really? So another anecdote that I've got is across Tesla. So I own a six-year-old um, Model 3. Yeah. Uh, it's got about 90,000 Ks on it. And I've tested several other cars that are double the Ks. They've been used as Ubers or long driving and whatever. And um, same age, double the Ks, lots of fast charging compared to my home-fed car. Mm. And um, and 1% per um, difference in the battery health. What? So it really makes different. It's very different across vehicles. Heat, temperature management. That's what it's about. Really? Yeah. Okay. So your car. What's the battery health on your car? Yeah. So I've got a, um, a as I say, about a ninety thousand kilometer six year old Model Three, one of the very first ones that came to Australia yep. from from Fremont, and it's at eighty four percent. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. It's really great. So this is basically peace of mind. It really is. And and then there's also people who are um, a bit concerned that maybe I've lost some range or I've got a bit of a problem. And that's another time to... Oh, so it's a current owner. They're not selling the car and they're like, oh, what's oh, going so on? What's going wrong here? Okay. And I've, we've caught some cars that have got some problems. Really? Yeah. And customers start to find that there's a bit of a drama there and maybe it's not charging fully anymore or it's not giving quite the same range. Or... So you've actually picked up an issue with the battery that's under warranty and Absolutely. then Absolutely. And we've been that customer's advocate, that independent result that yeah. they can then take back to the dealership and say, no, actually, I have a problem. Yeah. And that's something that we've had to help them with. Um, and they've had a few challenges with some manufacturers. Really? And, uh, and I think, you know, having that confidence of, a, of an independent voice is another part of the process. Mm. I just reckon that's such a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's putting power back in the people's hands and, uh, and you know, giving confidence to um, all those folks who are out there ready to go EV, particularly in that used market. You can buy some great cars. There's some MGs out there at under $20,000 now. There's Atto 3s under $30,000 in car dealerships, so they're probably even cheaper in the private and market. And do car dealerships offer this as a yeah. service? So we've got some car dealerships um, are offering it. They've got the device in their shop and they're right. doing it as part of their work. Yep. Um, but if you are out there buying, you can also request a battery health test and in just about every capital city in Australia and other areas around we have through the EV uh, through the test EV network um, a bunch of uh, mobile operators and fixed fixed site operators who have the device who can turn you out a test this is an all this is not a paid post by the way <laughs> um, this is I just wanted to cover this because I 
I actually think it's really important. I think people don't necessarily know where to start when it comes to buying a secondhand electric car. Mm. I mean, lots of people have bought secondhand ICE cars. I've done done it lots of times, but it is that extra thing that you just go, hang on, can a mechanic just come and look at that? They can't tell me what is going on with the battery. So it's, it's important. It's not easy to pop open the battery and go, oh yeah, it looks, oh, it's, it's all right. All right. <laughs> Give it a dust off. Obviously, such a consummate professional I am. I not at all thrown together. This. Um, he's now going to check his email to contact Austria and um, get yes. the battery health check of this Kia EV3 GT line, which I have on. Feels a little bit like Eurovision. Line. Uh, you know, uh, Austria calling. Um, <laughs> so we get a result via email where the device is tied to a certain email. Yep. And then in there, we just click on the little result. This is what it looks like. So 99.8% yeah. battery health on this Kia EV3 GT line that has 3,933 kilometers on the clock. And it also gives us a benchmark about how the vehicle fits versus all of its um, friends and relatives that we've tested in the past. Right. And uh, right in the middle, right, right to in the average zone. And we also think that it's got excellent health. You'd expect that on a 4,000K car. Yeah. Um, and the second page gives us lots of technical detail. So we've got um, how much That's usable you, energy. Yeah, out of your battery. How, and then the actual range that you can typically expect. Yeah, that's right. And then for all of those tech nerds like me down the bottom here, we've got this heat map which shows us how balanced each individual cell's voltage is. Uh, and uh, in the case where we have problems, that, that one cell that might be a problem will stand out. And we've seen that in the past. So this is a oh, great result for a car that you'd expect to be giving yeah. us a great result. Yeah. But, um, you know, that, that peace of mind uh, that we're all looking for. That is so cool. Actually, can you show me? You've got a print out there, haven't you, of a previous car. So you just yeah. can kind of see. this, And this is what you get given... This is what you'd receive, yeah, absolutely. This is what you give to people. You'd, yeah, absolutely. You'd, you'd receive so as a bit like of that. a printout yeah, um, of the two pages again, you know. So the main high level data on the first page, yeah. all the extra bits on the second page. And then page. the nerdy stuff on the second page. That's right. Page. And, and then also, we, we, you know, in plain language, plain English, we're going to give you that insights. And if you've ever got a problem, we also pop up a box in the bottom corner with a full explanation of what the problem is, too. Do you find that the buyers are getting this or are the sellers getting it? It depends. I think anybody who's looking to sell a car quicker for more money yeah. should should get it right. as part of their marketing. Yeah. And that's what some dealerships are doing. Do people, and some people post it? Like, do they, mm. so that if someone's looking for a car, because to me, it Absolutely. wouldn't be something you'd withhold. You'd be like, hey, check this you out. You should be proud, loud, and proud about it. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so, yes, some dealerships are now doing that. So, um, uh, Easy Auto 123 do that on a lot of their cars. The second image on their ad is is the test result right. um which then gives them you know that that sort of leading um position um and obviously the, the auction houses a few of the auction houses like pickles are doing that, that pickles are doing that as well yeah. and you know buying a car from auction might be another way to get into a really good priced ev if you've got a little bit more of an appetite for risk but that risk mm. is really reduced because you've got the battery because health you've test. got the health check yeah nathan i just learned so much <laughs> it's it, it's it's really oh, like Putting the power back in the hands of the people, and I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. You know, as an AIVA person, as a um, as a Can person. Can you explain been, AIVA? Yeah. To so people? Australian Electric Vehicle Association. I'm the Queensland director for that um, organisation, and uh, you know we're the voice of EV owners, yeah. and we you know it's really passionate. I've been in the EV game for ten years now, and I'm really passionate about giving consumers, owners, the opportunity to get you know the best possible driving experience with the best right car for them, just like you do when you're showing them how many yeah. bottles of wine. Fit. Well, I'll stick to the wine and you stick to the battery health checks and together awesome. we'll have all EVs covered. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Brilliant.